Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show and uh, I've got a really special show today um, on, on a lot of levels. One, uh, matter of fact, what I should do is grab this real quick. <laughs> we'll do this. We'll, this is not number one. First, uh, I'm here with uh, Olivier Castilla. Castilla. Uh, he's the owner of uh, Chateau Doisy Vidrine and um, one of the things is that I found this uh, chateau really because of a book, and the only thing that was what was significant about this is that uh, a good friend of mine, her last name is Rodrigue. She spells it a little differently, but it's it's the same family. And I found it in coincidentally this book that I found at the estate on the table where the uh, where the camera is actually now situated. It's the very first one under uh, just desserts, and I remember sending a. Um, a message to her saying look what I found so um, that was one of the things like when I came to Bordeaux I wanted to visit the estate you know besides coming to the Sauterne Barsac area uh, I wanted to visit this particular estate of course and um, uh, so this is a very special uh, episode for me because uh, because of all that and just finding <laughs> finding Gary's book uh, on on the table was was just kind of a nice little fun little part of it so, um, Olivia, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about you and your family and, and the estate. Okay, Mr. Um So, Doisy Vedrine is a second class five gross okay. um, in Barsac, and uh, this property has been bought by my family around uh, 1840. Okay. Uh, so, for this time, it belo belongs to the same family. Um, I am in charge for the, the property uh, for uh, 1972. I began to work here with my father at the beginning and then my father passed away in uh, 2001. Okay. Uh, so from this time I um, look after the property alone. Um, the property is uh, 27 hectares, uh, planted with 80% uh, of Sémillon. 15% of Sauvignon and 5% of Muscadel. Okay. The average age of the vines are over 40 years. Um, the surface is 27 hectares, I wrote it. Okay. It. Um, so we are uh, in Barsac, uh, placed between two first, the two first classified growths of uh, Barsac, which mm -hmm. are Coutet and uh, Climas. So a very good terroir. We <coughs> the, 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 the the nature of the soil, um, which is uh, uh, argilo calcaire. Uh, you, you understand argilo calcaire? No, I don't know. Clay, Clay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, gives to the wine a natural acidity. Uh, which gives to the wine the freshness. Okay. It's why uh, most of the time the bar sac are more fresh, more easy to drink wine. Uh, okay. Uh, with a good complexity because uh, you know the the the, the sauternes is made with grapes which are picked when they are contaminated by a small fungus which called botrytis. And this fungus uh, concentrates the, 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 the juice in the in the grapes, and we only picked by hand, of course, and um, we only pick the grapes which are very concentrated. And and we saw a lot of this in, in the vineyard. It was uh, uh, you were telling me that you you've had to start your harvest uh, earlier than normal. Yes, it's uh, the the the, the uh, earliest uh, crop that I've never made. Um, uh, before it was um, in uh, 
1997 we begin to crop in uh, on the 11th of September okay uh, and this year we begin to crop on the 7th of September um, so but the, 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 the weather condition on the 2011 vintage are very special because we have uh, a very early spring and the flowering time has been very uh, very early then okay. the um, the we call this the the the, the verizon, mm -hmm. which is the time where the grapes are changing of color and <coughs> this time has been also very early then um we had a, a, a very dry condition in in uh, till the 15th of july so it blocks the, the evolution of the of the maturity then uh, hopefully we had end of, of july and beginning of uh, august we have some rain which they blocks the the the, the, the evolution okay. and so the gra the grapes could mature normally so we 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 have early september uh, very nice weather warm and as uh, the, the the soil wa was humid it's natural it was uh, the perfect condition to develop the botrytis and so we have uh, started on the 7th of september and the botrytis had is uh, making it show up very quickly okay. due to the, the, the weather conditions which are very dry um, till the last weekend where we have few few rains but uh, two days and uh, for, for the next days we have again very good weather condition with very dry afternoon and mm -hmm. also in the morning it's uh, there is no uh, rosé, which is the humidity. You mean the, the, the fog? The so yeah. no fog now. Yeah. So the botrytis needs to live, and the, to live it needs humidity. So it picks the humidity in the fruit, which makes the concentration very quick. Right. And uh, this was the first time uh, I've actually, I mean, th this trip's the first time I've actually tasted any wine grapes on, off the vine. But this is also the first time that I've actually been able to taste the grapes with the botrytis on it. and. You you know we were talking about how it's it's very jammy. It's not yes. it's 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 um it's not like eating a grape with all the juice in it because what what he's talking about is the botrytis is sucking all the juice out, so you get a very concentrated flavor, and that's what the magic is of of these of these kinds of wines. Um, and you know this is like the first time I've seen Semillon live. You know okay. I, you know seen actually Semillon in, you know uh, in person. Um, and I've seen some of the other grapes when I've visited some of the uh, wineries in Texas, but uh, we didn't. I didn't see any Semillon there. Um, I know that some of them have Semillon, but none of them. I didn't go out to the vineyards of, of, of those. Yeah. But um, so it was really interesting to be able to taste the actual grape uh, with all the botrytis on it. And I, I there'll be pictures up on the website, but. Um, for now, all the pictures are going up on the Facebook site and also on my Flickr account. So every, every day, I, I, when I get back to the hotel, I upload all my pictures. Um, but uh, you know, when you see these grapes, uh, they're all kind of shriveled up, and they also have you know the the fungus uh, on the outside. And when we were we were in the uh, the winery itself, yeah. and they were just perfect timing. They were bringing in the grapes and putting it into the. Um, uh, to the to the machine, the machine. Yeah. yeah, you you just like yeah, all this so. like all this like smoke, and mm -hmm. it's really it's really the, the fungus you know going into the air, um, and I had a you know I had a great view of, of that, um, so I mean it was one of those things where coming out here to be able to see all that in person is way better than than trying to read about it in a book, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. because you can read about it but you're not but it's, I'm getting that experience. Um, and you cannot taste the grapes in the book. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't taste the grapes in a book, not at all. Um, so, uh, uh, so this year has been uh, an exceptional year as far as being an, an early, an early harvest. Early, um, uh, and uh, in terms of um, quantity, we have a good quantity. Okay. Early, we have uh, no hail as uh, some neighbors 
in Sauterne, they have some hail. Okay. And so some uh, chateau has been destroyed by the uh, chateau. La Tour Blanche, for example, uh, lose most of this uh, oh, production. Um, so here we have the chance not to be affected by this, uh, this problem. Uh, so in terms of quantity, we have good quantity. And in terms of quality, it seems that we, we have, a, again, a great vintage of Sauterne. That would be awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, and when when was the uh, when was the the uh, chateau founded? How 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 long ago was it founded? Um, th this um, uh, the chateau has been built in sixteen uh, something. Okay. Uh, but we have not the exact figure. We it seems at the beginning it was uh, a meal uh, okay. because. Uh, just in, in, in Chateau Coute, there were some monks, and here was the meal for the monks, I, okay. I think. Okay, so it's been around for a very long time. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and what, what I had read about it, there, there is some, there's some uh, doubt or uncertainty of, of some, of the, some of the earlier history and, and the, all the, the, the three, the three uh, doisy properties. Yes. And who owned what, and and uh, and all that. Um, but this uh, of the three, this is the largest and, and the the most important. You're telling me. Yes, uh, Doisy Vidrin is uh, the the most important. Uh, it, we have, uh, as I told you, twenty seven hectares, um, and the other we are very close because it's the same property which has been uh, shared in different family. Okay. And uh, so on our side is the family Vedrin who bought. Uh, the property. Then we we have uh, as neighbor Chateau d'Oisiden, which belongs now to the Du Bourdieu family. Okay. And uh, we have uh, Chateau Du Broca, Doisy Du Broca, which uh, uh, belongs to to Berenice Surton, um, who owns also Chateau Climas. Okay. So. And besides this, you also uh, are a merchant, right? Yes. Um, I am a wine merchant in Bordeaux, and um, so we we are uh, working uh, mostly for the export market. Uh, we we are the second exporter of Bordeaux uh, in the customs uh, sources okay. uh, produced the the the. the the classification, and okay. we, are, we are the second one. We export in uh, uh, 40 different uh, countries, and uh, we have also um, a company, uh, sister company in uh, New York, okay. uh, which is called uh, Joan US in New York. Um, so because we take back the activity of uh, Chateau and Estates, uh, which decide who decide to stop the activity for the Creek classified Grosso Bordeaux, and uh, as we were we are specialized in classified Gros, we found that for the property it was very important to have a distributor who knows how to do okay uh, with the classified Gros of Bordeaux, and so we we take the plate there, and we have also uh, a small company in China with uh, two persons who are staying there. Okay. And uh, yeah, I've been seeing that, uh, reading for, for a while that the, the market in China has been exploding. Um, actually, when I was over at Phone Rope, there they had a couple, they had a couple gentlemen from Hong Kong uh, yes. that, that were visiting at the same time. Um, and I know that the 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 one gentleman, um, he's been coming to he's it, it's not new to him. He's been coming to Bordeaux since the seventies, so it's not like you know to him Bordeaux is a new thing. He's he's been enjoying it. Yeah. For a long time with his company, um, but you know, they're, they're, I've been reading quite a bit that there's been an explosion in interest um, in uh, in China with uh, with all the with all the wines from Bordeaux. Sure, there you go. Yes, <laughs> more markets. You know, it's more yeah. markets to expand in. It's you know, it's 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 great. It's great for business, right? Yeah, the <laughs> Chinese market begins to be uh, um, interested. Uh, to to uh, to to take the the sauterne, to drink the sauterne. right so we hope uh, it will develop help the, yes. the owner to to develop the sales in uh, of sauterne in uh, in China very good 
Very good. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's try uh, the one we've had. The, we have the 2004 vintage. Yes. Right. And you were telling me that uh, this was what the forgotten vintage. Yes, it was a forgotten vintage because uh, you know the weather condition was not were not so exceptional. Um, but uh, we, I think, we make a very strict selection and. Uh, as always, you know, people who buy a bottle of Toisy Vedrine are never, never um, um, uh, disappointed. <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> right, because uh, we try to fix the level quite high, and uh, so we produce small quantity, but we produce a very good wine in 2004 too. All right. Yes. Well, let's let's try this out. Let's try. <laughs> As always, I love these types of wines. I mean, they're just the 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 bouquet, and then of course, I'm sure the palette's going to be wonderful too. I mean, I'm not the only one that ever calls this thing liquid gold, but it's just it's just wonderful to ever have some of these wines. Well, Another reason why I'm so excited about being in this area today. And, and no offense to the other chateaus I've been to, you know, they all had wonderful wines, but. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to compete against dessert wine. Mm. It's a balanced wine, you know, it's very fruit. Mm. Right. But there is no excess of sugar, you know. No, it's not excessively sweet. And that's something that I think a lot of people need to remember is that these are sweet wines, but they're, they're not, they don't have that... I don't want the sugary sweet. It's not yes, really, really it's excessive. Not, it's not sugar inside. It's right. fruit. Right. That's a little difference. You know, you know and, and it's a taste of fruit, not a taste of sugar. Right. And you tell, you say the, the dessert wine, but it's also and mainly now uh, this kind of, uh, of wine are for the aperitif. It's right. very pleasant to drink this kind of uh, uh, wine because they are well balanced. And again, it's not sugar, it's fruit inside. Right. You know, that's where... Um, Very complex. Use the, 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 the fermentation of the, and, uh, of the botrytis, you know. Uh, it gives to the wine, there's a lot of uh, smell. And as you know, um, I don't know if you have already seen the grapes, which has been made to promote the, the, the Sauternes wine. It's a grapes composed with a lot of different fruits. It's all the smells mm -hmm. you can find in the glass of Sauterne. So you have a so pineapple, you yeah, have a... It's an apricot. Yeah, it depends of, right. of the property, but globally, you know, you have a, a, some peach, some mm -hmm. uh, uh, honey, some... Uh, um, and uh, I shall show you the, the, the image of the, um, the grapes you of You know, I, I'm just now seeing smell that pineapple. Yeah, you know, and, and what what I want to talk about with with sweet wine is that I've had other sweet wines, like usually red sweet red wines, and I'm never a fan of sweet red wines, but because they're sweet, they're like sugar sweet, not this type of sweet, and you know they they don't have they don't have that complexity, they don't have that that structure that that these types of wines have, so. Well, and a lot of people enjoy those those red sweet wines, you know, and, and uh, it, it's nothing wrong with with enjoying those. I just have a preference. I just don't particularly care for them. But this is the type of sweet wine that that I've come to really really like, you know, and and, and it's just wonderful to have it. Mm. As I go up my nose on it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know, I talk about smelling the wine so much that sometimes. I get excited about smelling it, and I tip the glass a little too much, and it, it's like, okay, I, I don't need to, I don't need to snort the wine, but this, you know, if I was gonna, if I was gonna do that with a wine, it would be something like this. This is a, uh, this is wonderful, and, I mean, obviously, I'm gonna recommend that, that that you buy the wine if 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 you, any vintage is gonna be wonderful, but if you do find the 2004, um, don't be hesitant to buy it uh, because. People say it wasn't a good it wasn't a good year. Um, 
I would say definitely buy that. You know, and I know that uh, you know 2004 didn't really get a good reputation in general no. with Bordeaux, yeah. and especially when 2005 came yeah. along, yeah. everybody was just you know all all in awe of 2005 that yeah 2004 would be kind of like well yeah it's not as and good as 2005 and after 2003 you know it has been also in the shadows of 2003 which was very uh, right. uh, rich and uh, punctuous and but that is more classical uh, right uh, vintage of Bordeaux so uh, um, I think there is a place for this kind of, uh, of wine as an aperitif and for the other which are more complex as a 2001, 2003, 2005, 2007 which are the, the hot vintage right, right? okay um, are more complex and uh, so it's pleasant to drink young but mm. also uh, you can keep them for a long time but this time the other vintage 2002, 2004, 2006 which are very pleasant mm -hmm. and are very uh, pleasant to drink young, like this, as an aperitif. Well, absolutely. I wish, I wish um, they had some of this with the hotels that, well, the hotel, well, not the hotel, but the, um, well, yeah, the hotel is staying here because they have a restaurant too. But some of the restaurants up up um, in Poyac that I've been eating at, um, they don't really have the you know this is, they don't have this for an aperitif at all. Um, but it would be it would be nice to have one of these. Um, I can even see like having it with like you know with my my first course with the salad. Yeah. You know, um, and that's something again to remember that you know we call them dessert. Well, we call them dessert wines because. People think that you need to have them either for dessert or with dessert, but you don't necessarily have to do that. When you talk about okay. aperitif, you can have it with your dinner. Um, it's the you know it's same thing. Yes. Say all in the same lines with champagne. You don't necessarily need to have it just for special occasions. Um, you don't necessarily need to have this you know for just dessert. You can have you can have it with your main your main course or as an aperitif. It's not yeah. So for the cocktail formula, you know, mm -hmm. when you hit uh, half the some with some sandwiches with right, uh, right. with the ch with the Chinese food is very uh, matching well. Yes, uh, because the the sweetness helps with the spiciness, exactly. right? And one was one thing which uh, um, is very for me very interesting to 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 taste and to to, to remember. It's uh, to taste sauterne with oysters. Okay, because you know. Uh, when I was a child, uh, we used to, my parents had a cottage on the Bassin d'Arcachon and um, every Sunday after the, the, the mess, you know, the, the friends of my parents came and uh, had a drink with a, a glass of Dozy Vedrine. Okay. And um, as it was, it was on the seaside, we just come, uh, come out from the, 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 the water, from the a bath and uh, we uh, we were so uh, wet and uh, uh, with salt water. Okay. And uh, we used to to drink also a glass of uh, of sauterne. And when I I taste uh, a few years ago with uh, Alexandre de Bursalus at Chateau Iken some um, Chateau Iken with uh, oysters. It, it makes me uh, uh, souvenir. It, uh, remember? The, 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 yeah. I remember the, 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 the days when we go out from the from the, the bus, uh, drinking sauterne just with the water, salt water. So it it matches very well. Uh, oysters with sauterne, but it mm -hmm. needs to be a balanced one, right? You know, which is very important. You know, and and that right there talks about like how the power of 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 your of smell and taste and memory because that brought up a, a, a long memory yeah. uh, an old memory and and you know I, I I think we all experience that where you smell something or you taste something and it brings you back to your childhood mm -hmm. um, and it makes it makes a nice memory out of that so and I could you know I could see having something a little nothing too salty but something with a little bit of like a hint of salt yes. you know with, with this because it'll help mm -hmm. it, it'll counteract mm -hmm. counterbalance with, with the sweetness you know and that's Something when you're pairing wine, it doesn't always have to be like with like. It doesn't have to be the same type of stuff. You can you can really con you can do with contrast exactly. Um, 
and that's that's something where you know as 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 a you know in my in my real life day job you know as, as a restaurant manager um when anyone's talking about pairing wine with their with their meal you know you you want to see is it something that's going to contrast with their meal in a good way or is it going to complement it and that's something that i think a lot of people don't remember is you can you don't have to always make it complimentary you can you can have that contrast what you say is very, very right because uh, and uh, it's very, the wedding is very close, like mm -hmm. uh, sauterne with foie gras, yes. which is something very rich, very sweet, very okay, very unctuous. Uh, that's a wedding of two tastes which are very close. Or it's something which are very opposite with the blue cheese and uh, the sauterne, the sweetness okay. of the wine and uh, the, the salt of the, f of the cheese, you know, right. is, is also matching very well. Or the oysters, as I told you, with the yes. salt and uh, so, uh, as you said, um, it could be uh, drink with uh, certain could be drink with a lot of things, you know, because uh, you know mm, either it's uh, very complementary taste like foie gras and uh, mm -hmm. it, either totally opposite, and uh, also we know with uh, the the. the the fruit, you know, the the, the, the peach, uh, you can make a, a, a salad of a peach with uh, with the sauce. Oh yes. it's delicious. You know. And I can see, you know, the kind of the, some of the salads I've had, and somewhat recently, is like a, having a spinach salad with like pecans uh, with nuts, and you get you get that the the nuts have a natural sweetness to it, and you have like a, a balsamic uh, balsamic dressing, um, a vinaigrette dressing. Or 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 a, um, a honey like uh, we we at work have a honey balsamic so it's balsamic it's balsamic vinaigrette but it's got some honey in it and you put that with a spinach salad with some blue cheese and with some pecans and you've got some little bit of sweetness there but you've got a little bit of uh, acidity with with the balsamic and then you pair that with this oh, it'd be awesome yes. <laughs> it'd be awesome. Yeah. So, um, again, like we're, we're saying, you don't have to just drink it for dessert or have it with dessert. You can have it with multiple dishes. Um, um, just alone like this, you know? Oh, yeah. It's only <laughs> once. <laughs> this, is, this is definitely one of those wines where um, you don't have to pair it with food. And I, I like to drink wine, just drink it. I don't necessarily have to pair it with food. But when I do drink wine, I do a lot of times think about what can I pair with this, you know, pair with it. But... This is one of those wines where you don't, if you're if you're somebody that's really very big on you must pair wine with food, this is one of those wines you don't have to feel that way. You can just drink it on its own and, and really enjoy it. And you know, just drinking, listening, the, the, <laughs> you're an expert in it. It's very pleasant to right. listen to the music. And, uh, <laughs> so by the way, this is a, this is a, this is a really, this is a nice antique, a, a piano, or it was probably at the time called a piano forte, before they shorten it to piano, um, so just a little brief history. My my degree, my actual college degree is in music, and um, like I told Olivier, don't expect me to play anything on here. Granted, it is out of tune, but I haven't actually played in a long time. But I really w wanted this in the backdrop, kind of like that little that little bit of you know for for me a little connection to to the old music side of me, um, and because I saw this and I was just I was just the, the, yeah. Big smile, and I was like, "Oh, so cool!" Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, anyway, I think uh, we'll we'll wrap this up. This was a wonderful experience uh, to sit down with you for a little bit, go out to the vineyard, uh, uh, to see the actual grapes, and, and taste them. Um, and just uh, the other thing is that I showed up thinking I had an appointment, and Olivier was like, "I don't have any message," so. Flat out, he he said, "I will take care of you. You know, I will 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 do the tour." Uh, he could have easily said, "I'm too busy." Um, so I that that alone um, makes this such a, a wonderful experience because you know I, I couldn't find the exchange that I had, had with whoever it was um, to say yes, I'll be there at ten in the morning on this day. Um, but he he was so gracious to say, you know what, I'll, we'll go and do the tour and uh, we'll sit down a little bit. So. If nothing else, that is probably the most special part of the whole trip for me. 
So uh, I'm getting all teary eyed. I get emotional a lot of times. <laughs> Uh, so uh, this has been wonderful. But so. Mark, you are you are welcome, and uh, don't hesitate to oh, come yeah. every vintage. Every vintage, <laughs> every harvest, right? <laughs> we are with so, uh, and you can come with friends if you need to. Absolutely, Some, uh, it's always more to read. It's one thing to to watch a, a, a video. It's one thing, mm -hmm. but to 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 live the, the here and uh, to see. In the, with his own uh, eyes and uh, right. own taste and some more efficiency. Uh -huh. Wonderful. I want to thank you again. And, thank you, uh, Mark, for your visit. And I want to thank all of you for stopping in. Uh, we'll see everybody next time. And uh, I do have a couple more places to go to for this week, plus um, some re more reviews of uh, just ordinary everyday wine that I found at the grocery store the other day. Um, so I'll be doing some more of those. Uh, and. I'll be back in the States. Well, by the time you see this, I'll already be back in the States, but I'll be back in the States in a few more days. Thank you very much. We'll see you again next time.